you are ministering spirits in the classroom. You have a church that reports on time every week, every day, five days a week. I get the saints once a week. So you're all preachers and all pastors. So let me show you with you four P's in your purpose as you go throughout today. You know the story of Daniel. The Bible teaches us that Daniel purposed in his heart that he would be what God wanted to be in a strange land, in a land that was not his homeland. It didn't matter where he was, as it were, in a desert. But he got the one drop and he blossomed. So Daniel was a man of purpose. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat. Notice carefully, purpose is at the beginning of everything. If you don't come to school with the purpose that I am going to make a difference in the lives of the children that God put in my care, then you're just getting a paycheck. And you're in the wrong profession. Because you're not going to have an easy road. Daniel purposed in his heart. It is the beginning of everything. You have to decide that I am going to be a difference in the lives of some. You might not win all. But if you save one, to God be the glory. <coughs> Love is hard to resist. Hard to resist. Love from God. This matter is supreme in your activity. And without it, people drift. Just go anywhere with the flow. And then secondly, in this story, Daniel was a man of prayer. For those of you, I gave you a principle of my book. But I want to give this other one away. Before I go, it's entitled Prayers of Faith for Tough Times. Examining Nehemiah's Winning Strategies. And you raised your hand first. <laughs> Daniel was a man. As a matter of fact, Daniel got up, you know, they, they wanted to trick him. They said, man, he's not supposed to pray to, 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 to his God. And Daniel prayed every day and he faced his God and he raised his hands and his heart in prayer. And nothing dissuaded him from doing what he knew it was right. We live in an environment today where the environment sometimes impacts our purpose. But you are placed here to be an influenza. Influence. Where does influence come from? Influenza. Flu. What does flu do? It infects. You are here to infect the environment, not have the environment infect you. That's one of the problems with the church today. The, the world is infecting the church rather than church infecting the world. You're here to influence your environment. Let your virtue, and you can't influence with what you don't have. Yeah. <laughs> if you ain't got it, you can't give it. If you don't have love, you can't give love. If you don't have Patience, you can't give patience. If you, don't, if you don't have care, you can't give care. Yes. You can only give what you have. So Daniel was a man of what? Prayer. Prayer. And thirdly, Daniel was a man of perception. <coughs> when those children walk into your classroom, you have to ask God for the spirit of discernment. 
he, he was a man of perception. Lord, how am I going to deal with this bully today? Give me wisdom. You know, when Solomon was asked what he wanted, he didn't ask God for money, he didn't ask God for a car, he didn't ask God for a house. He says, Lord, give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And then the last P that Daniel received as a result of the first three P's. What are the first three P's? Prayer, Purpose, prayer and perception. You have to have those before you get this last one. The last P that Daniel received was the P called power. You can't be a powerful teacher unless you have purpose. And then have what? Prayer. And then have what? Perception. Then comes power. Some of us want the power first. So, if you want to excel, there's your formula. <coughs> when I was born, my father, whose name is Neville Emmanuel Scavella, you know what Emmanuel means? God with us. He named me Paul. When I asked him when, a couple of years ago, I said, did you want me to be a preacher? He said, yes. I have one, one blood brother and I have an adopted brother. And that's why I named you Paul. But you know, he never one day said to me, I wish you would be a preacher. But he lived such a life. I never one day have seen my father raise his voice at my mother. Not one day. When you understand your purpose in life, God gives you the capacity to pray and to have perception, then God will unleash his power in your life. That was the power of silence. Sometimes you just have to, some of you men will live much happier. <laughs> And longer. <laughs> if, you, if you would understand the text that's, that, that, that you sometimes like to abuse, that, that, that you use to say, I'm the head of this home. So you do as I say. I was counseling a couple one time and the, the lady looked at his pastor in the Bible say, that he's the head, but I'm the neck on which the head <laughs> So if you want to be powerful, you understand your purpose. Seek God before you touch those children in the morning. You go before God and say, God, give me wisdom for each one. All 40 of them. <laughs> And God will not fail you. There'll be difficult days. There'll be challenging days. But at the end of it, there will be glorious days. And one day, you will reap the reward of your labor. May God bless you. And may you blossom as you enter your classrooms today. And you seek to influence these young lives, when Jesus comes, he will say, well done, a good and faithful servant. Thank you.